Adding a scalloped border to a card creates a nice finished edge. But you don't have to buy a scalloped border die if you already have a set of the Nestability scalloped squares or scalloped rectangles in your collection. Let me show you how easy this technique is to do, and then I'll show you my fun finished card. What I have here is the largest Nestability's rectangle scallop die. So it's the scalloped edge, and then I'm going to make a three and three quarter inch square card. So I've cut a piece of black cardstock to three and three quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. Now if I flip the die over so that you can see the blade side here, you're going to notice that this particular piece of cardstock will fit perfectly inside this die. So it's not going to cut the edge of the die. It's not going to cut the edge of the cardstock, but it is going to cut a scalloped border on this piece of cardstock. This will leave the top of my cardstock intact, but it'll create a nice edge. And you know I love making these three and three quarter inch square cards. If you want to know how to make an envelope to match, you can check our release party uh, video from last month's release party and I show you exactly how to make an envelope using a piece of 6x6 six six pattern paper. So I'm going to start with my A plate and my B plate and then I am going to position this piece of cardstock right inside the die and you can feel it. You can actually feel it get stopped next to the blade like that. And you know that when this edge of the cardstock is up against these scalloped points, it's kind of pressed up against all these points, it's going to be perfect at the bottom too. It's going to be perfectly straight. So let me lay that down here onto my B plate and then I'm going to put the C plate on top and cut. Now I've got a perfect scalloped edge across the bottom, but my top and my sides are fine. I've cut a piece of pattern paper from the True Love Stamp TV kit, and you can also purchase the Gina K Designs True Love Pattern Paper Pack. And I'm going to just, I cut it a little bit smaller than the size of this panel so that just my black border is going to stick out along the perimeter there. I'm going to tape that on. And position it right in the center. Okay. Now my next step is to assemble a little trio of circles here. What I've done is I've used our new one free with three stamp set and that's the stamp set you've got style and I've stamped the little dress form here and I'm going to mount this little circle onto a little black circle. So these dies are both the large and the small classic circles. And then I have the lacy circles and I'm going to pop that one right onto the lacy circle. And I want to make sure that this point here, this particular loop, is straight down because that's going to kind of make a difference when I go to position it on my panel here. You're going to want to see it right in the center will be a little more balanced looking. So the bottom of that dress form is going to be lined up with one of the little scallops there going straight down. And then this whole panel is going to sit on here. And I'm going to color that in with a little bit of glitter and a Copic marker. So I'm using the R39 Copic marker. And I'm just going to color that heart in. And then I'm going to color it in with a red star Sakura pen. And that'll add a little bit of glitz. And I'm going to color the entire dress form in with some clear. And that'll just sparkle and shine when the light hits it. And we'll give this a minute to dry while I stamp my 
greeting on my card base. Okay, so I'll put this aside for a minute. Now I have my card base here, and this card base is a three and three quarter inch square card. So I'm going to stamp my greeting. My greeting is You've Got Style, and I want that to be stamped at the bottom here so that when this panel is laying on top, the greeting is right underneath. Using a little bit of Memento Black ink, I'm going to ink that up, and I've got the You've Got Style lined up with one of the grid lines on this long block. So this way I know when I stamp it, it's going to be straight. So I will just stamp that there. And now I have my greeting. Here's my finished card project. And as you can see, I've just tacked that on with a little bit of adhesive and popped that panel right on top. And what I like about this card is I usually have a border going around the entire card, but I made this one so that this whole top panel would cover the card, but on the inside it would be all white. So you wouldn't be able to see that from the outside, but on the inside you can write top and bottom if you have a long message to write. And then I've made a little envelope to match. This envelope was made using the same pattern paper. And again, if you need the tutorial for this, it's from our December release party. So you'll be able to see it in that video. And then that just fits in perfectly. However, if you want a card that you can address, an envelope that you can address, you can use one of the complementary patterns. I've used a lighter one here. This way the address will be able to be seen. And you can see that even though they're not the same pattern, they coordinate so nicely because this little red heart matches the background here. And it's just a perfect little snug fit. Now some of you have asked me about additional postage for these small cards and what I would recommend is if you're going to send it in the mail, tuck it into this cute little envelope and seal it up and then put the whole thing in a regular A2 size envelope. Then you won't be charged any additional postage, but when they take it out it still has the perfect envelope to match the card. They may even want to keep that envelope because it's just as pretty as the card itself. This technique works best on smaller cards, but don't limit yourself to just scallops. Try creating a fancy edge using some of the labels dies that you have in your collection for another fun and useful variation.